Now let's introduce a quantity called gravitational field. Now unfortunately, the word field has many usages in the English language. For example, you use it to refer to say a piece of land. It's used very often in cricket. Uh, we also use it say to refer to a study, a field of study, etc. so on and so forth. But the the physics field, the field that we are going to talk about is very different. It has nothing to do with these usages. So therefore don't let your intuitions for those words you know, affect how, what you're going to learn about physics field right now. So to start off, let's, let's take a simple example. So let's say I, we have a random astronaut somewhere who is just you know, flying around in space. Okay? And he has a point mass with him, of course. Now he finds a spot in space that he likes. It's a random point in space. Okay? And what he does, he, he, he places this point mass in that spot. And he finds that there is absolutely no force acting on that point mass when he places it in that point in space. Now, immediately some of you will say, how is that possible? Because he himself has mass. So he has to attract it gravitationally, so it has to feel a force. You're right, you're right. But let's, let's assume that the force that he you know, exudes, or rather the, the gravitational pull coming from him is negligible. Now, let's say he comes back a few years later. Again, he's flying around in that same region of space. He finds that spot of his, he finds that point in space that he liked before. And he places that same point mass again. Now he finds though that right now, that, that point mass feels a force of attraction. So the moment he places it, it flies in some direction, right? Which means it's feeling a force. But therefore he says, or he deduces that something has happened to that point in space. The character of that point in space has changed. Get it? So he's saying that, so before when I placed it, nothing happened. But now when I place the same point mass in that point in space, it feels a force. So therefore, Something, some, something must have changed the character of the point in space. Now the question is, is he right or wrong? Now you might say, no, of course not. It, that's probably happening because there was some, uh, you know, star that was formed, and therefore it is exerting a gravitational pull on that point mass when you place it over there. But from his point of view, he doesn't really care. He doesn't know. He doesn't know what is causing the gravitational pull. All he knows is that when he places the point mass, now it's feeling a pull. So frankly, there's nothing really wrong in what you're saying. To some extent, the force right, produced by that star has affected the characteristic of that point in space. So how do you quantify this change in character? So to quantify how a mass changes the character of a point in space, we introduce this new quantity, physical quantity, called gravitational field. Now, gravitational field at a point is defined as the force that a unit point mass will experience when placed at that point. To find out the gravitational field of a point, you have to keep a 1 kg mass at that point and see what force it experiences. This is defined as the field at that point. Now, you will obviously ask me why, why do you need a 1 kg force, a 1 kg mass, and why does this tell you anything about the character of that point in space, etc, etc. So to answer these, let's take an example. So let's say we have a point mass of mass capital M over here, and there's a two-dimensional grid around this. Now you are given the task of selecting a random point in this grid, right? And then, say, and then you're supposed to like fit in point masses over there and figure out the force that that point will experience, that that point mass will experience. For example, let's say you have point masses of different masses, like say 1 kg, 2 kg, 3 kg, so on and so forth. You take each of these masses one by one, you place them at that point, and then you have to figure out the force that is that is that these point masses are experiencing. Now we obviously know from the law of gravity that the force that they will experience will be capital G, capital M, small m divided by R1 squared, where R1 is the distance between that point and the mass capital M. So that means if I placed a mass of 1 kg, the force that it experiences would be G capital M by R1 squared. If I placed a mass of 2 kg, it would be G capital M by R1 squared into 2. Similarly, if I placed a mass of 3 kg, you know, it would be G capital M by R1 squared into 3. But do you see a pattern here? The force here has like two parts in it, right? One part of it is a constant. 
you can see here that the force is always gm by r1 squared, which is a constant, multiplied by the mass. Now let's say that gm by r1 squared equal, is equal to k1. Then the force is always equal to k1 into m, right? And that k1 is dependent or is characteristic for that point. What I mean is that let's say I have another point now, I choose another point, point two, right? And now I'm, in, I'm doing the same exercise again, I'm inputting multiple masses again. Now I'll find that the force they will experience will always be G capital M by R2 squared into M, right? So it'll be one into GM by R2 squared or two into GM by R2 squared, etc., etc. So the constant here, the constant term will be GM by R2 squared, right? And this constant is constant for that particular point, two. Now if I keep doing this for all the points on this grid, I'll find that each of these points has a constant associated with it, right? K1, K2, etc, etc. And what is this K? It is nothing but Gm by R squared, right? Now, look at it closely. What is Gm by R squared? It is nothing but the magnitude of the force that a mass of 1 kg would experience if placed at those points, right? And if you remember, this is the definition of the gravitational field that I told you. So this is why gravitational field is defined this way, because it gives us an idea of what force a, a mass will, will feel if placed at a point in space. It's a characteristic of that point in space. So gravitational field is generally denoted by the letter capital E, okay? And it has the unit of what? It should be Newton per kg, right? Because it is force per unit mass, okay? Now, another common question is, is, is gravitational field a, a vector quantity or a scalar quantity? Now, think about it. Now, I defined it as the force that a unit mass would experience, right, at a point. So therefore, it has to be a vector quantity. So yes, uh, gravitational field is a vector quantity. So this, this concept field, right, this quantity, is an abstract quantity. It's not very physical. It's not like mass, right, where you can see it. So visualizing this is a little tough. So let's think of a few representations. So let's say I have a point mass over here, some mass capital M, right? And I find I have another point in space at a distance r. Now, what is the field at that point? We know it is gm by r, right? It, it's a vector. So what I do is I draw a vector, an arrow in this direction, okay? With the, with the tail of the vector at that point. So this is my representation of the field at that point. Now, similarly, you can keep doing this. If I take another point, right, that again at a distance r from the, from the same point mass, then again the field will be in this direction, right? It'll be another arrow like this. If I take another point, the field will be in this direction. You can keep doing this continuously, you'll get multiple arrows like this. Now if I go to a point that's even more further away, the magnitude of that arrow, right, the magnitude of the field will be lesser. So therefore, it will be an arrow of lesser length. So similarly, you'll have multiple such arrows. Now, you can repeat this and keep going, right? So this gives you an idea of what the field looks like, or you can say this is a representation of the field, okay? Uh, this is one representation. There's another one also. You can, what you can do is, you can just join all these arrows and, you know, make them form lines. These lines are called field lines. Now, they are also a representation because they help us uh, they tell you the direction of field at a point. Now let's ask a question. Let's say I have two point masses, M1 and M2, and I have a point in space. Now, now my objective is to find the field at that point. What do I do? I take a point mass of mass 1 kg, I place it over there, I find the net force. Now, that is one way of doing it. The other thing is that I can just add the fields, right? I can, I can find the resultant of the fields produced by each of these masses individually. Because, Field is the force experienced by a point mass, right? So, and force is a vector quantity. So, for example, what I mean is that if I place a 1 kg mass, this 1 kg mass will feel a force from this point mass and this point mass. Now, the net force will be the vector sum of both these forces. Therefore, the net field will also be the vector sum of the individual fields, right? So, the point I'm trying to get at is that you can add fields vectorially at a point. So, this is why the, the quantity field becomes really helpful. Because if I have a system of multiple discrete particles, now, and I have to find the, the force that a point mass will experience at some point in, in the system, right? 
what do I do? So I don't have to keep, you know, inputting my mass and calculating the force every single time. I can just calculate the field at that point. So I'll just find the sum of all the fields at that point, right? The vector sum, that is the net field at that point. And once I place, once I place my point mass over there, I just have to multiply the mass with the field. And that gives me the force that that mass will experience at that point. So finally, now that you've understood the concept of gravitational field, I want to add one last thing. So henceforth, whenever you see two point masses, I, I don't want you to think, okay, so this point mass is attracting this, this point mass gravitationally. I want you to look at it as a two-step process. That is, so I want you to assume that the first point mass is creating a gravitational field and the second point mass is experiencing a force because of this field. So it's not that the second point mass is, is experiencing a force because of the point mass, the first point mass. It's experiencing a force because of the gravitational field. So there is nothing, in fact, I've, I've not changed the mechanism here. This doesn't change the law of gravity or it doesn't change any of the predictions. But it just helps you understand later concepts.